This is Geometry Lesson 5-2, Corresponding Parts of Congruent Figures. The first theorem that I want to talk about today is the Segment Congruence Theorem. It states that two segments are congruent if and only if they have the same length. What I would like you to do is turn to page 257 in your book, and I'd like to talk through the reading there. We know that if two segments are congruent, they uh, an isometry has been performed, so that means that the distance is preserved. So if the figures are congruent, they would then have the same length. But with this theorem, we want to make sure we can go the other way, that if we say we have the same length, then are the figures, in fact, congruent. So I'm going to read through the example on page 257 that kind of goes through that, that theorem. So if you look at the segment EG here, the statement is that EG is equal in length to MO. So what we want to do is pr um, prove that it's actually congruent as well. So if you take EG and you translate it by a vector of GO, as you can see right here by this red arrow, we can see that it makes E prime O prime. Then if you go down to figure 3, we can show that E prime O would then rotate onto E double prime O and match up. So that would mean that EG would be congruent to MO by the definition of congruence. So we can say both ways. If two figures are congruent, they have the same length. Or if they have the same length, they are congruent. I would like to work through this example with you here on number one. It says, in the figure below, MA is congruent to TH. If MT is 25, find AH. By the segment congruence theorem, we know that MA is going to equal TH. By the addition property of equality, we can add AT to both sides. So MA plus AT is going to be equal to TH plus AT. We then can say MA is equal, I'm sorry, try that again, MT, MT, is equal to AH. Thus, if MT equals 25, it would make sense that AH also equals 25. There is also a connection between angles. If angles are congruent, they are also equal to each other. In one of your, in two of your homework problems today, you'll work through the proof of that theorem. But right now we're going to use if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure, and we can think about it both ways. So if they are congruent, they have the same measure, or if you know they have the same measure, you can then say they are congruent. So we have this example here that we're going to work through using this theorem. We know that triangle, or I'm sorry, angle ABC is congruent to angle EFG. So this is congruent to this whole angle. We also know that BD bisects angle ABC, so by definition of angle bisector, we know that this angle would equal this angle. So ABD and angle DBC would also be congru or congruent. Now we're given that angle ABC equals 16x minus 4. So this large angle, ABC, equals 16x minus 4. And the measure of angle EFG equals 4x plus 20. So 16x minus 4 and 4x plus 20. So what I'd like you to do first is set up an, an equation using the angles. So I would like to make a statement saying that my angles, which, stating which two angles you want to be equal to each other. Because we know the two angles are congruent, we can use the angle congruence theorem to say that they are equal. So now that I have that, I also want to um, substitute this expression, 16x minus 4 equals 
x plus 20. Now we want to solve our equation for x. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And add 4 to both sides. So that means 12x is going to equal 24 and then x would equal 2. So now I need to find angle 1, but before I can find angle 1, I need to find out what my angle meant, what either one of these are. And since we know they're both equal, we can solve our equation by plugging in x and in either one. And it's, it doesn't matter which one you choose, so let's just do um, 16, 16 times 2 minus 4. That would be 32 minus 4, which would again then give me 28. Now we know that the measure then of angle A, B, C Let me try writing that again. The measure of angle A, B, C equals 28. So that means that if B, D is the bisector, that's going to cut this angle into two equal pieces, so the measure of angle 1 is going to be 28 divided by 2, which equals 14. A lot of work went into that problem. The, the next theorem that is extremely important, I want you to star it, highlight it, circle it, do whatever you need to do to make this theorem stand out. This theorem will be used in chapter 5 and in chapter 6 and 7 when working with trying to prove figures are congruent. In chapter 7, we're going to try and prove that triangles are congruent. You will need this theorem. It's called Corresponding Parts in Congruent Figures, and it will be abbreviated CPCF. So if two figures are congruent, then any pair of corresponding parts are congruent. So we know that if figures are congruent, an isometry has been a performed. And we know that when isometries are performed, length or distance is preserved and angle measure is preserved. So that means we can say in our figures that the side lengths, would, corresponding side lengths would be congruent and corresponding angles would be congruent. So here I have a figure, triangle BIG is congruent to um, triangle CAT. Now you can be able to identify which angles would be congruent and which segments would be congruent just by using this statement. But you can also draw a picture if it's easier for you to see. As you can see, I drew two triangles that are the same and I labeled them BIG and CAT. When you make your congruent statements, the first thing you need to make sure is that your vertices of your triangle or your figure match up. So B has to match up with C, so they both have to be first in our name. Then if I move on to I, I have to find its pair over there, and that would be in the second position, I and A. And G and T, the vertices, match up, so those need to be in the same position of my name. Then I can use that to identify corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Here I have, so B, I, G, so this angle needs to match up with angle C, A, T. And angle I, G, B is going to match up with angle A, T, C. And angle G, B, I, I'm going to put three hash mark, or three arc marks here, is going to match up with angle T, C, A. T, C, A. And if we take a look at um, side lengths, if I want to match up with C, A, I know that's going to match up with segment B, I. So I need B, I with my segment bar over the top. A, T, I want to match up with I, G segment bar over the top, and TC I want to match up with GB. So now let's move on to example B. 
In solution two, they just um, made their own diagram here and matched up side lengths. And so as you can see, my R side, BI, does match up with AC just like we did up here and BG matches up with TC and so on. So these two triangles were just another example of drawing a picture of triangle BIG and CAT and matching things up. So if you have a triangle, you're going to have three sets of sides that would be congruent and three sets of angles that would be congruent. If you have a quadrilateral, you would have four sets of sides and four sets of angles and pentagon five sets of each and so on. So um, it's very important though when doing this to make sure you set up your congruent statement ahead of time if it's not given to you so as to be able to match our side lengths and angle measures easily. Because of the segment and angle congruence theorems, we can substitute statements of equal measure for statements of congruence. So as you can see in this chart, if we have two figures that are congruent, the congruence statement looks like such as the following, or it looks like AX with the segment over it is congruent to segment BY. So notice the notation. We have the segment bar over the top with the congruence signal symbol. But we're also saying that those that is also the same as saying that the length is the same. So the notation for that would be to say AX equals BI or BY because we know that when we have two points next to each other, that means distance is the same. So this would be two corresponding statements that you could have, one if you want to show congruence, one if you want to show equality. Now with angles, we also use our congruence symbol if we want to show they're congruent and we just show the angle symbol. So angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. But if we're talking about equal equality, we want to show that they have the same measure. So then we put our little m in front, so the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. This concludes lesson 5-2.